<laughs> say a bunch of cool shit. <laughs> What is up, dudes? What's going on? I'm what here with with the uh, illustrious El Padrino and also Ben Soto joining me again tonight. Uh, we are we're drawing the New York Ripper. Oliver already in chat. What is up, dude? From Six Five Six Comics. Good morning. Oh, you Good guys morning. always make me think of a six one nine for some reason. It's the Mexican thing. You get Rey Mysterio in my head every time I see that combination of numbers for some reason. It makes no sense. Uh, what is up? What is up? Charles Reeves. Uh, read in my mind. I say that all the time. It's his, his moniker as well. Welcome, dudes. Uh, we're, we'll be getting into it in a minute. I just got my whole setup from the week here. We're doing New York Ripper tonight. I was a little late because I had to update my PC randomly. Who loves to do that? Uh, I need to see about like changing the timing on that or something. But uh, we're here. and We're doing the New York Ripper tonight. I was showing the dudes right before we went live uh, how Ebon Press had done an updated comic where they added a mask to him and everything and gave a little bit of a visual flair to it if they wanted to draw him. Uh... But there's plenty in there. There's, I was saying too. There's lots of gross shit that we can't really draw, and I can't really pull up for reference. So uh, it's kind of rough. But I was going to pull up. Uh, we'll keep that up real quick. Uh, the trailer. That's what I was gonna do. Sorry, guys. My brain is mush. Petrino and Ben are real talkative tonight. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Padrino's getting right into it like it's a competition. <laughs> here we go. Get the trailer here. So are these like fan cut trailers? What the fuck? Oh god, I just love the look. I like I'm whatever I shoot, we're shooting it on film, man. Looks too damn. Even a shitty movie like this, like the sleaziest shit ever, can look so damn good. Uh, thanks to being shot on film. Yeah, here we go. Here's to hoping this doesn't have anything crazy in it. <laughs> Never know with these old trailers. Couldn't That's get a trailer true. titty, guys. Close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Kayla. Just in time for her favorite movie. Speaking, what do you want? <laughs> to dedicate a murder to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, he's supposed to sound like Donald Duck, but it's like, pretty lazy. <laughs> yeah, who? Guy with a strange voice. Let he call you back. He sounded just like a duck. Wait. Just like a duck. You think that could be the, the serial killer that we were looking <laughs> for that talks like a duck sometimes? <laughs> yeah, he rips open a nipple with that razor. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I was like, a lot of the kills we can't really pull up for reference. It'd be too hard to find a guy missing two fingers in his right hand. Hi, Kayla. I remember to invite Kayla tonight, too, guys. Don't think I haven't been trying to invite her all these nights. She's been busy with work and stuff. I think she's doing it overnight tonight, so send her your love. Oh, she's stuck in work hell. <laughs> this is hilarious. Yeah, the movie's batshit, man. Like, and like, if you don't care, like, if you 
can get past the like sleaziness of it because it's like sleaze for the sake of sleaze. It's basically set around like you know 42nd Street in New York, which was like the the peep show capital and all the like grindhouse theaters and stuff. Yeah, the sleaze and misogyny oozes out of my VCR after I play this movie. Yeah, this is just like, uh, you couldn't hate a woman harder than this movie does. <laughs> and that's why I was like, okay, I showed Kayla a, uh, a parody one first, which was The Editor, which is the last, basically the last night of the month, the movie that we're doing, which is like an obvious parody. And uh, and then we put on the New York Ripper because I had to cook dinner at that point, and I forgot like how like gratuitous it is, and just like left her and Mike and her boyfriend Ed in there to like watch the movie, and just like one by one they all walked out into the kitchen <laughs> to just hang out with me. And, like no one really said anything except for when Kayla finally came out, she was like, "Fuck that movie." <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, my bad. It's not for everybody. I love Pedrito. It just pulled it up and was like, I saw the dog eating a hand. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't think of like um, any other things because like the, the killer doesn't really look that Yeah, he's just a dude. Yeah. Like you could barely tell him apart from like, like the lead protagonist of the movie. Yeah. That's kind of why, like, I like that they updated it with the comic and they gave him the mask and everything. That's what I was like. I think on this one, I'm gonna do the, the Ebon Press version. I also yeah, I just mean, love it's, those it's guys. It's realistic, you know. Like, not many serial killers in the real world like wear fucking costumes and all that shit. But like, for a movie, yeah. it's kind of boring, right? That's really that's really funny too. Like, I would. I'm shocked no one's ever done it. Like, has somebody done that for like a sketch show bit? Like just a serial killer getting ready, <laughs> Tr trying on different masks and outfits. Nah, this ain't my thing. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Like a, le a leather daddy slasher. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to take this stream down. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, it isn't. It's exactly it too. It's like not realistic. In real life, the serial killer is like the chubby guy next door that, like, coaches softball or some shit. Yeah. It's always the, the weirdo most... in a duck mask. Right. It's always the most boring person. Yeah, that's basically like almost one of the like morals of the the film too. Is like you know, it's that it could be anyone, and it's again like I was talking when you were on the other night, Ben, that like one of the running themes of Jalos is like, oh yeah, and by the way, someone in the movie is mentally ill, and they're the most <laughs> mentally ill person you've ever heard of. And that's basically like, again, last five minutes of the fucking movie, he's just <laughs> off the deep end. It does, like, a decent job of, like, having those red herrings and throw-offs and, like, the pace is so rapid with it that you're, like, constantly like, who the fuck is doing this? But, uh... <laughs> It has a hilarious, again, mentally ill climax, and it's just like, man, there was a time where no one gave a shit about, like, using this stuff in movies. Like, I don't think you could do, like, a Jalo today and not piss everybody off, uh, unless it's intended parody. Just something about that juxtaposition of, like, murdering somebody so violently and using that voice, a Donald Duck voice. And the entire movie, because it's, like, overdubbed, you know, like, half these guys were acting in Italian, and then somebody else is dubbing over them in English. So, like, nothing really fits. It's got this eerie, surreal quality to it because of that. But then also, like you saw in that trailer where the cop's like, guy talk just like a duck, and the lead detective's <laughs> like, just like a duck, you say? That's, like, halfway through the movie. They've been investigating a guy who murders people and talks like a duck on the phone for fucking days like and he it takes him time to deduce that in real time in the movie and then he's like wait like the killer we've been tracking you're like oh fuck like italy moves at a snail's pace when it comes to uh detective work but 
they know how to make an interesting horror movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love it, no matter how dumb it gets. Uh, some of them on this list are going to get way worse, too, guys. I mean, there's that one in a couple nights. What was it? The uh, Death Walks at Midnight, where the dude looks like Phil Spector. Me and Mike couldn't even get through it. We were laughing so hard. <laughs> Uh, that was a treat. And that one, I was like, I have to rewatch that that night. Like, I can't put that one off, because that was one I haven't seen. So I was like, I gotta watch it so I know what to draw. But, uh, Spencer, this has been good for you artistically. Some of your best sketches. Thank you. I've been getting a lot of that. Uh, means a lot to me, especially coming from you. I love that you'll shit all over my work, honestly. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm having fun with it, working out the kinks and stuff, getting ideas, know what I can and can't accomplish, and that's what's important to me right now. Uh, I kind of want to do one in a month or two after this is all done that's like action movies or something. But I also need to challenge myself to start doing like scenery and shit again like that. Uh, so I can get back into like building up perspective and actually putting a whole scene together. Hmm. Because I'm of the firm belief that you can do that. Like, if you can nail establishing shots in a comic, you can pretty much have everybody fucking floating and bullshit for the rest of the comic. But you need to be good at establishing uh, shots, and then you can get away with a lot. That's uh, true. But that's, that's like also having really fucking good establishing shots and understanding what you're establishing in those shots. Uh... But if you can have, like, an all-encompassing establishing shot that shows everything and lays out the groundwork so your reader understands exactly what's going on, you don't need to be constantly going, like, full European comics and rendering every background, unless that's what you're going for. Some right. stories, it really, like, suits that. Like, I think in the European style, like, I keep seeing those Disney books, the, like, French Disney books, and, like, I need to get those for my nieces because they're fucking insane, but... I think that stuff works better in a kid's book when you're trying to occupy uh, more of their, like, imagination and time and not so much, uh, like, they're not latching so much onto the storytelling of things where an older reader is trying to uh, to extract the, the story from a comic book. They know they can also just go get an art book if they just want to Google intense art. Right. But yeah, I'm like, uh, at least that's where I'm at with the book I'm trying to do myself. And I'm like, if I can nail that and do really good establishing shots, and I have those shots where it's like, hey, I'm not a complete idiot. I can draw shit. I just don't want to draw it all the time. <laughs> I want to draw one panel a page. What is up, Black Rose? Welcome. <laughs> Juanito Gay. Come to the Bureau's Gay. <laughs> You need to do a spoof movie where the guy talks like Mickey Mouse. The best of friends. Oh boy! <laughs> How many guys tonight? I got your best hooker! <laughs> That's one of the best parts of the movie. The The lead detective is like addicted to hookers and somehow the, <laughs> the New York Ripper knows and just taunts him the whole movie. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sure loves whores! <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Yeah, right? <laughs> Sounds like a cool cop to me. <laughs> or Goofy. Goofy could be the other one. Oh my god, I wish I could do a good Goofy. I, I, I always thought like a Pee Wee Herman impersonator would be terrifying, or if you could get Paul Rubens to just like do that <laughs> character but go like full-blown madman for like a horror movie. Uh, I thought that would be hilarious. It's because I got a, a close buddy that can do the Pee Wee Herman voice, like, flawlessly. And he looks like like you would expect every dude that can do that voice to be, like, a goblin human being. And he looks like a completely normal human being. So, I'm like, that's why I think it would work so well coming out of, like, a, just a regular dude talking like that. Like, when he would do the laugh, it would, like, I'm on the verge of pissing myself. <laughs> I'm 
make him real gross tonight, I think. Kinda looks like I'm just doing the Mighty Ducks logo. Yeah, you guys will definitely have to check this one out when you get the chance sometime. A lot of them are like on Tubi to stream for free. Uh, some are like on Shutter. If you guys have that. We do uh, not have that. Some are on Amazon Prime. I honestly think Shudder is like one of the only streaming services like worth its money, like subscription price nowadays. Uh, like if we were to somehow land sponsors, they would be one where I'd be like, oh yeah, that's a perfect fit for the channel. Because uh, they genuinely are great. I think like all of us are subscribed to them at this point. And it's like they have tons of horror classics and then like modern shit that isn't always great, but sometimes you find new stuff that you like never would have probably heard of or picked up otherwise like shit that looks would look like a red box movie otherwise is joe bob rick still on there yeah dude that's like that alone is worth the price that would but be the I'm only like, reason i'd do it he's getting old but like uh as long as they still retain the license to the movies they cover uh, you can keep watching, like, the old episodes and stuff. But, like, they've tried to cancel him, like, six times with that show being live, and it never works. Never sticks. It's hilarious. He's the man. Yeah, he's awesome. He still loves to watch Monster Vision. Yep. Way back in the day. Like, my brain... Because I had sort of like forgotten about Monster Vision and everything for years, and then Last Drive In got announced, and I had like this weird deja vu moment and was like, wait, what? It's like, I've seen this before, and I was like, oh yeah, this is the same dude. Like, I'm not imagining this. It's like, it's like, did I just like will this horror cowboy <laughs> into existence? <laughs> like, this false horror childhood cowboy. memory? There's a movie right there. Yeah, the horror cowboy. Yeah. My childhood imaginary friend that was a <laughs> horror movie reviewer who dressed like a cowboy. What up, Brian? <coughs> Brian Gay. So like I can't even keep up with chat now. I'm missing so much. Sorry, guys. Got into sketch mode. I think it's just Kayla and Brian talking to each other, so I don't feel too bad now that I'm reading it. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right, whatever. You guys are having your own conversation. <laughs> I'll keep drawing. We're just talking about cowboys over here. Yeah. Or cowboys, yeah. Does he still do the uh, the countdown? Or, like, you know, list off everything that's in the movies? Yeah. Uh, God, what do they call it now? Yeah, I forgot what it was called. Like the bucket list or something list? Body count or something, sort of. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it goes over like how many boobs are in the movie and all that good stuff. Yeah. You know, the, the important things. That's right. Uh, yeah, it's great, though. And like there's, like I said, they still have a decent amount of the licenses and everything to the movies he's done, so a lot of the past season episodes are still up. I'm sure you can, like, find them online illegally, too. Like, I'm sure somebody ripped all of them, but... Like, I think movies should just make that, like, a special feature and, like, reach out to him and try to license those back to put them on their films, because... I'm sure a ton of people would love that. Yeah. Big ass eyes that are connected. Yeah, the picture of that mask kind of reminded me of that episode of Twilight Zone where all the people were like uh, pig people. Pigs, yeah. 
can't remember the name of that one, but that one used to come up all the time. Uh, it's they're like. Uh, did you see that newer horror movie came out? Is from the guys who, I think they helped. Uh, what's his face from the office? Write a quiet place. Uh, it's called Haunt. Oh, Krasinski. Um, no, I haven't seen that one. So, Haunt, I think it initially released on Netflix. I don't know if it's still out anywhere or anything like that, but it's like a bunch of college kids on Halloween decide to go to a, uh, uh, like a haunted house attraction. Um, but then they all start getting picked off one by one, and they realize, like, the haunted house is not fake, sort of riff on that. It's more obscure than that, and I don't want to spoil the movie for anyone who hasn't seen it. It's decent, uh, but in that, they're all wearing their, were called, like, I think it was Ben Cooper was the guy who designed them originally, but they're vacuform masks, uh, and they were, like, uh, the Cooperville ones, like, there would be, like, the classic Universal Dracula and stuff like that. Oh, and nice. it's just, like, a, like, a hard plastic shell with, a like, a rubber band elastic for the headband. And okay. They're, like you've, I can pull them up. I don't know why I'm not thinking that, but I think they're called like Cooperville or Coopertown masks originally. And they did like superheroes and shit like that back in the day. They were the outfits where it came with that plastic mask and like a T-shirt that kind of looked like the yeah yeah I know what you're about. the hero. Uh, I've actually been wanting to make one for a while uh, for our stuff. Uh, I don't know why I can't find the original. Yeah, I guess just Ben Cooper masks is easy. He's the OG. Uh, yeah, that's that's essentially what they gave him in this comic, but it's like a, a knockoff Donald Duck one. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd love to make some of these weird fuckers. Like some Floyd yeah. Walker ones of these. Oh, dude, that'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah. They're so fucking goofy, too, but I always love these. And back in the day, they were, like, hand-painted, so... Kind of... Like cheap and goofy as shit looking on purpose. Yeah. We I used to wear it, those though. for uh, carnival here in my country. We all the kids. Oh wear yeah. Those. You do like the? Uh, is it like skulls and stuff like that? Mm, no, I think that's more Mexican. Like here, it's just like random stuff, like whatever. Oh, just whatever. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of yes. like Halloween, but it's a uh, carnival in like it's in like February. It's kind of like Halloween. Everybody dresses up, and it's like random stuff and like movies I don't know like when I was a kid I used to dress up as like superheroes and shit like that yeah I was just wondering because there's another one is it is it Tibet that does it where they all wear the fucking like wild skull masks there's an Asian country that does like a similar festival but they all wear these like weird fucking skull masks I never remember exactly which one it is uh I don't think I've heard of that one. Man. If anyone in chat somehow knows what I'm talking about off of that vague information, I keep getting sidetracked, but hang on. Ah, oh, what That's looking good, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, I like that. That, uh, that fucking city in the background is looking great. Too. Okay, yeah, it is oh, a Tibet thanks, man. parade. Yeah, these fucking... It looks like some shit out of a Tim Burton movie. They're like veiny skulls with red eyes. Uh, it is a Tibetan ceremony. I was right, somehow. Uh, these guys. Oh, that is creepy. Oh, damn, nice. Yeah, they're weird as shit, but, like, the skull motif is, like, a common thing. That's, why, like, Day of the Dead, like you were saying, Padrino, with Mexican... I was like, yeah. do you guys all get down in, like, your own weird cultural skull? Because, yeah, these Tibetan skulls, this is what got, like, really popular in tattooing sick. for a while. Like, yeah, like, there's ones that get, like, super fucking ornate and crazy, but they're always, like, really fucking cool. 
Yeah, those are awesome. Yeah, but I always called them like smiling skulls because that's like the common motif. But they have like the they gen like tend to have the the smile, the red eyes, and like veins on the side of the head. Uh, but like in tattooing, I always knew them as the like ornate ones that look like they're made out of a bunch of jewels and shit. But yeah, this like ceremony, like imagine like a thousand fucking like Tibetan dudes all marching together wearing those masks. Yeah, that's sick. That is creepy, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck is this ceremony called? Okay, yeah, see, this is more like the decorative Tibetan skulls that I was thinking of, and I think traditionally these this was literally like metal they hammered into actual human skulls. But again, really fucking cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, is it like a Buddhist ceremony? Mahakala, is that it? Hmm. I don't know, man. I need to read up more on this. More research. It looks cool Wait, as shit. I wish we had that in my country. We don't really do that. We have Day of the Dead, but we don't really like do any of that stuff. But uh, yeah, we do like a little. Uh, it's, it's, it's all about food, really. In that day, it's like you give food to any like loved person that you lost or whatever, and like we okay. make these, these breads that look like little dolls or something and they represent like souls and shit like that but we don't do anything yeah like leaving out an offering yeah but in mexico like they do the, all the cool stuff with the skulls and shit like that yeah you're we making have, like, a, like a tangible have, like, paying about of the, respect the, the devil and stuff you know like in those ones they have like really cool devil customs but uh it's not really skulls it's more about the like when the spanish came in they brought all the religious shit yeah. People start creating dances around all the, the myths and stuff, and we have like dances where people dress up as like these really like cool devils. Spanish and, like, Satan. Huge masks. Yeah. Oh my god, is that where the really like conquistador looking image of Satan came from down south? Maybe. Holy shit, that would make a lot of sense. Did you say conquistador Satan? Yeah, you know that like devil with a Spanish mustache? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I got you. I'm thinking of just like a hot rod <laughs> depiction of the uh, devil. Have, but... I have one that um, I'm going to type it in the private chat if you want to look it up. Oh, it's like yeah. a custom of like a conquistador, but it's all like made of metal and it look, looks really sick. So you guys like revere them down there and like appreciate conquistadors or you like fuck those guys? No, it's all like uh, we have like dances for like the dances represent history you know what i mean so yeah like, so you do like celebrate it in a sense there, there's like a dance that represents like uh it's like for each culture let's say like uh let's say like there's that typical dance of new york and there's like a typical dance of la you know what i mean yeah and each all of those are like very ancient there's there's so, like, crumping the and there's twerking <laughs> yeah, so like they represent like what was going on at the time. It's not like it's not like revering or anything. It's just like I like telling a story. I gotta copy this and pull it up. Take it easy. Kayla said she's got to get back to work. I believe. See ya, Kayla. Oh shit! This just looks like a bunch of babes in crazy outfits. Uh, you have to look at the, the mail outfit. I, I, I typed in what you sent me and it's just all chicks and crazy outfits. Unless yeah, this like is what your got, guys dudes look like too. Like some of the, like the male costumes, like the, the big ones. There was a couple. Like this on, guy? There was a couple on top, you know, if you go like further up. This guy looks like he's got a war club in his hand, but it's actually just the guy behind him. Yeah, That's like to the right, I guess, to the right and on the bottom. This guy who looks like a crazy matador? <laughs> under that. The one right under them. Oh, this dude? Yeah, there's oh, another holy one. Holy shit, these guys yeah. look awesome. Right beside that, what, that picture, there's another one with the mask. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. 
I didn't even realize there was a person in here before. I thought that was like a rack of Mardi Gras beads and wigs and shit. Those are like huge There's a man in there. That's amazing. Yeah. God damn, I would not look at the eyes on that thing too. It's like a cross or like a googly eyed demon. I love these guys though, because they almost look like they're it looks like they sawed off the back half of a really ornate carriage and made them carry <laughs> it around. Yeah. They're like yeah, half of a horse and buggy and then like yeah. a bearded wizard. Maybe it's knows. supposed to represent that. I don't really know like the, the story behind the customs, so, but maybe it's supposed to represent that because I know like those people are supposed to represent like the Spanish, I guess, from, from those times. Okay. I was gonna yeah. say like I'm not sure what the fuck it all means, but it looks red. Yeah, because like the 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 native women of that time they didn't dress like that, you know, so they are supposed to represent like uh kind of like Spanish fashion, but like with, with the times it's become like more uh, slutty, I guess. I was gonna to say, the color. chicks kind of all look like, uh, uh, Western saloon hookers <laughs> in, like, a high-budget Western from the 70s. Yeah, like, <laughs> I think this is just, this almost looked like a white lady dressed up. Yeah, that's like, that's like, this, she more looks, like the Spanish, the Spanish, uh, like, the way they used to dress back in those days, like, uh, yeah, she's like had some band, keys yeah. door in her. Yeah, I typed, like, the, the other one with the cool, uh, Devil customs on the private chat if you want to look it up too. Oh hell yeah. Almost looks a little steampunk, honestly. That's what yeah. I mean, it's like a mashup of all these different things. Like they really do, they look like uh it's like a grindhouse movies idea of like a western saloon hooker outfit. Like it's so over the top, but it's obviously not in that context. Like it's supposed to be dressy and like eventful and not like a slutty thing i'm assuming but yeah, it's like, weird they like almost the look day, like hawaii chicks in slutty, japan you know, like as, as time goes by it becomes more about like the fashion or whatever it's it kind of like loses yeah. the, the historical i guess aspect. that's a younger generation getting their hands on anything now this shit i can get down with a bunch of yeah. bat demons oh Aww. my god padrino can you get me one of these masks <laughs> Maybe. Holy I, I, fuck, dude. I will be in that... I'm not even kidding, man. We gotta talk off stream. If you can acquire me one of these, we need to talk. Holy fuck, the same dude... Oh, yeah. this is amazing. Sorry. <laughs> these are and shit. Yeah, dude, these are fucking awesome. I'm coming to Bolivia, dude. We gotta get down. You guys probably have send, crazy mushrooms there too, right? I don't think something I can crazy. send one of those uh, ever through through like mail or something because like those are really like you could really fragile. Like, hurt, touch and handle and that stuff. So uh, like if you can find like a Bolivian there that like, makes this shit, maybe he can make one. Oh but, man, uh, we gotta we gotta find the Bolivian mask maker who's immigrated to America. Look Fuck, at uh, dude. Yeah. Oh. Wow. I immediately am just like just like I'm I'm. It's that Argento brain, Ben. I'm immediately like, <laughs> I need some weird art for my film to just yeah. like nowadays it's even more uh, it's more elaborate. Like you can see, like they they are starting to put lights in the mask and stuff, and they even this have is, like uh, a. Like, call this festival shit, Yoshimitsu's wet dream. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> all I can think of. That uh, is awesome, dude. Yeah. Padrino wins coolest culture of the night. <laughs> oh my god, dude. This is just, it's like equally cool and then like doll yeah. hell spawn. The, that first one is supposed to be an angel, like the one with the blue eyes. That creepy oh, first. The, the that's fucking terrifying. How yeah. about this rat monster thing? That's a bear, I think, like a bear from hell. I dance. What's up, I actually Aura? dance this stuff in school. Oh my god, I, do you get into one of these outfits? And yeah. Get down? Yeah, like in school, every time there's a holiday, you uh, each grade dances like a typical dance. And one time we had to dance like Diablada, the, the name of this. And uh, dude, those masks are uncomfortable as fuck, you know. This is Bolivian R2D2. <laughs> yeah, Bolivian Star Wars is way cooler. So these are angels, the like blue eyed, like no, those smoky. Ones, the, the, girls, the girls with the horns, they are like female demons. That makes sense. Oh, okay. But they trick you to think they're angels with yeah. their blue eyes. They're all the same. Yeah. 
This guy, though, definitely an angel. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one is from uh, Morenada, the, the, the previous one. That's like the mask up, up close, I guess. Holy shit, dude. Padrino, you have blown my mind. I'm yeah, immediately but like... Really, uh, cool stuff with like all the religious stuff, like the way that the natives interpret it. You know, like they make it like all weird and shit. Yeah. Slipknot, but they're all Bolivian. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, I really want... I need to find... Alright guys, work your internet magic. Although, this would be hilarious to get one like that. I really, <laughs> genuinely, absolutely love... These evil-looking bat demon ones. Holy fucking shit, like I would... That'll be the first thing my son sees when my girlfriend yeah, like, look gives at birth one, uh, to a child right someday. Yeah, like, look at those... Those first ones. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, yeah they're super they should, like elaborate. You this know, is so. this is Bolivian Aku from Samurai Jack. <laughs> this shit rocks. I'm. I, this has completely sidetracked me from drawing. I gotta get back to drawing, but holy shit. Uh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that we have any other dances that have like these really cool customs because all the other ones are like more, uh, like normal, I guess. But those those ones, I always love the the fucking. Masks and shit like that. Yeah, that was fantastic, Padrino. Thank you for sharing that. I'm like, I gotta put this away for now, so <laughs> I can actually finish this sketch tonight. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah those are some cool designs, man. Oh my god, I'm immediately like just thinking about one day I'll have one of those hanging <laughs> on my wall behind me every time I stream. God damn, those are cool. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, have heard of this, but, like, uh, me and the the Quays, like, uh, our friends, like, from 6x6 and other creators, like, we're starting, like, uh, we want to do, like, a scene where uh, each one of us, like, does a little story, like, four-page story. Yeah. And, uh, like, I decided to do, like, uh, really kind of like, cool, cool and creepy stuff from my country. So maybe I'm gonna, because I want to, like, draw, like, cool shit, maybe I'm gonna do, like, one with where I, like, talk about that stuff, I guess. You should, uh, yeah. yeah. Jalo set in one of them festivals, bang. Yeah. No, Million like create, dollar idea. Create an actual demon that looks like one of those things. Hell yeah. Those are really I'm interesting. Worrying about this making any sense tonight. trying to make sense of I was fragging my brain. Sorry there, guys. <laughs> like talking to myself out loud. I'm trying to make sense of um, <laughs> computing. Processing. Yeah. And... Oh, know what I forgot to do this time around. I did mention it at the beginning. But the Alterna Fall campaign is live, and we are like $100 away from being funded. So if you dudes haven't checked it out already, go check it out. I think Pete's live right now, too. Yeah, he uh, is. 
I will I will drop the link in a little bit. I'm sure he's already mentioned it. I popped in for a little bit and was saying hi to everybody, thanking all the people who have backed it already. Uh, I gotta look up what a fucking just one razor blade looks like. How insane is that? It's those the simplest things you gotta look up. Yeah, I'm like, I know it's basically a rectangle. I think it's because like uh, they are so simple that everybody recognizes them. So if like you mess up like uh, the smallest detail, like it's gonna be yeah. like everybody's going to yep. notice. Like, yeah, it's not gonna read as what it's supposed to read as at <laughs> yeah. all. I also just suck, so. <laughs> No, no, I think every artist runs across that, though. Like, you're drawing, like, a, a door, for example. You're like, what do the door hinges look like? Yeah. It's the simplest things you take for change? granted. Yeah. You know, like, I'm looking at a razor blade, like, when did it get all this fucking detail? it reads as one that's all that matters yep now you're gonna be like what does a nipple look like yeah right <laughs> just put a little like... bit of one on the edge of this <laughs> they're pretty hard to draw like nipples like for real like, it's kind of like it's kind of like oh yeah not not make them immediately look weird as hell. Yeah, I mean, I like. I think that's like, one of those things that gets aped a lot by artists too. Yeah. One guy's like, "Oh, this dude figured out how to draw naked women, and it doesn't look weird. I'm just gonna steal how <laughs> he draws everything about him." Yep. What is it? Uh. The Cho dude they tried to cancel a while back. Is it Frank Cho? Yeah, Frank Cho. It's like I feel like that's one of the dudes that like cracked it. Art Adams and stuff like that. Is like dudes see dudes like that and they're like, we just need to emulate this as best we can. <laughs> Uh, Luis Royo, you ever seen his artwork? That sounds really familiar. I have to pull it up because it's not like exactly clicking with me. Yeah, he does these really nice like fantasy paintings. Okay, then I've probably just seen it like randomly looking at stuff. Ironically, hate fantasy books, love the art. I'm, I'm the same. The artwork is way more exciting than the actual story, most of the time. Yeah, I'm like yet to uh, find one that like holds my interest for a sustained period of time. More power to you if you guys like them, but it ain't my thing. Cough, cough, Rob Geronimo, cough, cough. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I tease him about that sometimes. I invited him on. I'm hoping to get him on before the end of the month. I know he's real busy, too, but... Tried to hit I up all the uh, dudes. Orchin has a really cool uh, question in the chat. Oh. I see. Do you guys have a favorite monster from a religion or mythology? <laughs> Satan himself! Uh, scared the shit out of me as a kid. I was like, oh, damn. Y'all got me thinking hell's a tangible place. I'm all fucked up. <laughs> uh, no. I didn't think about that. You guys know? Mm hmm... 
Favorite monster from religion or mythology? Yeah, you got a personal thing that scared the shit out of you? I guess he did just say favorite. Yeah. Could mean a lot of things. Right. It's uh, like, I've always been real partial to werewolves. Yeah. I'm a big nerd like that. I think, uh, for me, like, Bigfoot always kind of piqued my interest. I, I don't know if... He's a cryptid. I don't know if he'd fall into mythology or not. Hell yeah. We'll take it. We'll allow it. Cryptids are monsters, I guess. Yeah. yeah crypt cryptids, cryptids are monsters, too. Yeah. For me, I guess, like, uh, I think I have, like, megalophobia. Like, whenever I'm, like, really, like, tall statues or buildings, I get, like, this weird feeling. So I get, like, giants from religion. I think a lot of religions have, like, giants and shit like that. I think mm -hmm. those would be my, my ones for uh, religion. And for mythology, I guess, like, uh, I guess vampires count as mythology, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, so those ones. The concept of sirens is kind of scary. Hot chicks yeah, that will like, you off. All the, all the sea stuff is really scary, too. Like, all the deep sea stuff is really scary. Yeah. That's what I mean, like sirens of like any type, you're talking Greek, you're talking like sea uh, mythology, like it's just a, a scary concept, like uh, you're lured away by what seems like it might be your salvation and only to be like eaten, eaten by a hot monster. If you gotta go, that's the way to go. Yeah, I mean... It'd be worse. You could just be mauled by a male Bigfoot. <laughs> like, be mauled by an ugly monster. Yeah. Like, this one's a three and she's killing me. Would you rather be Blair Witched or Lighthoused? meticulous inking early on. I have not been doing much of this lately, although not having as many issues with my shaky hands as I thought I would. So that's cool. That's I found good. out uh, tonight that I can't uh, draw and speak at the same time, so that's why I've been so quiet. Oh, dude, welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. You should see you should see the nights where I haven't had guests. So thank you for coming on and being quiet with me. What is up, Colin? I'm not trying to uh, ignore you guys here. I'm just trying to catch up. The description of Leviathan in the Bible is peak cosmic horror. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, and I mean that's why I was like I'd have to like really rack my brain to think about like biblical. There's so much and that's going back uh, quite a bit. Probably bad. I haven't read the Bible in a really long time. Uh, yeah. I would like to uh, like uh, maybe do some stories for that scene that uh, I told you guys about. Maybe some like uh, because the way that they when they brought like religion here, like the way that all the natives like interpret it, it's kind of like scary sometimes. So maybe I'm going to yeah. some stories about that. I think I told you about the Satanist uh, miner sometime, right? What? I think I mentioned it, but I don't think I ever told you, like, what that's all about. I don't think so. It's kind of like a, a, the mining is like a, still like a big thing here. It's like a lot of people work in the mines in like some certain areas. Yeah. And like, uh, they have like this old belief that all the mines, all the undergrounds, that belongs to, to Satan, you know, that Satan's territory or whatever, you know, so... Uh, before this, they can start working on the mines, they like build this statue of Satan at the entrance of a mine, and they like, really? kind of, like ask him, asking for permission to work there, and like they do like a wow. or whatever. So like, but the, the you gotta hail like, Satan oh. before you go mining. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of like well, that's more like a, you guys. So you guys treat him more like a uh, like a benign deity. It's kind of like more. 
more like a superstition thing. It's kind of like working yeah, that's what I else. mean. Like he's not it's, so much like the yeah. big bad guy. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like for good luck, you know, because mining is a very dangerous thing, and like yeah, here, I get like, that. People still, people still like, like a, hey, this guy's known for getting pissed off, so let's give him something yeah. ahead of time and hope he doesn't right. fuck yeah. us over. And like the, the equipment that people use here is like still from like a hundred years ago or something. It's not like the modern mining in other countries. It's like all safe and shit. It's like still very like uh, kind of like shitty. So like they do it for for good luck, I guess. But like the the statues that they build, like some of them are scary as fuck. And inside the mine too, like imagine like entering like a cave and there's like this huge statue of Satan with a bunch of like alcohol and beer bottles around him in general. Jesus. Oblivious yeah, like uh, you can actually like uh, you can actually see those like in the in the mining towns. A lot of tourists go there to. And you can actually like tour the mines, I guess, and you see all the statues and shit like that. How's crime down there? Is it wild? Mm -hmm. No, not really. We have a lot of petty crime, but like uh, we don't have any guns here, so I guess that's you. No guns. Any... Never yeah, mind. I don't want them anymore. Dangerous shit. <laughs> yeah, like if people try to rob you, like the worst thing that could happen. It's like they have a fucking kitchen knife or something, you know, but like nothing yeah, gonna to poke too you real hard. Yeah, yeah, butter knife. So it's just like England, but everybody's got a great tan. <laughs> yeah. No, but actually, I think in England is way heavier, right? Like I've seen the fucking videos where people can establish it. Yeah, no, England looks fucking wild right now. <laughs> Probably not good to be laughing at, but I'll nervously laugh at it. Queen passed and everybody really lost their shit. Yeah. It's crazy, though, because it took, like, the queen dying for me to realize there were still, like, royalists in the world. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh shit, people do still care about this. That, so that was nice for like an afternoon. I think Japan is still like an empire or something. Dude, Japan just had their guy blasted too. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I forgot, I forgot. Like right before the queen died. Yeah, I completely forgot about it too until you just brought them up. Damn, man. Like, yeah. So much shit's been happening lately. It's the new world order, bro. Yeah, right. You can get this YouTube channel taken down. <laughs> Speaking. Calling out to the Art Bell crowd. Where is that screaming sound coming from? Right? Do you hear that? That's Pedrino. Oh, it is? Okay. It's probably the girl in my basement. Yeah, that's the girl in the trunk of the car. <laughs> yeah, I'll ask her to be quiet. Um, she she just took her gag off. Yo, I told you after the show. <laughs> Definitely got to uh, clean up my drawing table this week because I'm getting red ink all over the bottoms of these cards every time I touch them. That's just transferring from my table because I made such a mess all week. Jalo, we've been having too much fun, guys. And the last, the last time we were on. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say like I don't know what was up with Italians in the set, this and that they were making all these crazy fucking movies. Yeah, man, there's a there's a lot of them out there. Like this list is only really scratching the surface. Yeah, like uh, I know about the horror movies, but I I haven't really watched many 
those, but I know about all the Mundo Cane films and all that shit, all the yeah. documentaries about fucked up things that they started making in like the 70s or something. Yeah. The Grindhouse movement really kicked all that off and it was good times for art. Kind of sadly, those days are kind of behind us because of all the censorship on all sides now. Mm. So I just tend to keep my mouth shut on a lot of shit because I don't agree with a lot of it. There's dumb shit out there that I don't like that I still think should be allowed to be out there. And shit I do like that gets stomped on all the time and censored. That is life, I guess. I think in Italy or like certain parts of like Europe, they still make all the crazy shit too. Though, like they don't. Yeah, it's them. it's still definitely out there. There's still governments and stuff that have film funds that'll uh, let people make art without adulterating it and shit like that. So it's cool. It is still out there in ways, but it's fewer and further between, sadly. Gonna color this bad boy up. I was gonna ask you, Spencer. I know last time um, you said Jello meant yellow. Uh, why? Why was it called that? Uh, it's because of the uh, the pulp novels. They were traditionally based on back then. They were uh, they were printed with That's yellow right. covers traditionally. Yeah. Okay. And it was like. Uh, I think we discussed it was like a little bit cheaper over here, so it might have been the same thing there, and it just became like a thing early on where all these books were known for having a striking, bright, primary yellow color. They thought That's it also right. stood out to crowds a lot, whereas, you know, like a lot of stuff would do like, you'd think like Blood Red, it's all these crime stories or whatever. But right. They went with yellow. It was uh, Il Giallo Matadori, I believe, is the full term for it. Uh, and it devolved to giallo over time and transferred over into film. Uh, sort of carried those same themes, and that's why a lot of these are real crazy, too, is I think a lot of them were based on Italian books that we've never even got over here and stuff like that, so... You'd have these insane fucking stories that just didn't make sense to us because they didn't really have to. They didn't have our sensibilities and our culture and things. They were doing their own vibe. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, maybe it's all because of the culture or something. Because, like, I know that they have some, like, uh, costumes, like, for example, they have like this one religious uh, festivity where like people go out in the streets and they kind of like, pretend, not pretend, but how do you call it when you're like acting like something that happened in the past or something? What? Like when you when you're playing like a, a historic uh, event, when you're playing kind of like characters and shit like that. From oh, before. like a reenactment. Yeah, yeah, they kind of like, do like a re enactment of like Jesus walking around the, the streets when he was like getting uh before he, before he was getting crucified and stuff and they like run oh, around yeah. oh, okay. like yeah. naked and they like cut themselves with these stones to like so they can bleed all over the street. Something like that. It's kinda like I should like, again remember that. the term for that. Yeah I saw it like Irish, actually yeah. those uh, I saw it in those Mondo Candy films like that documentary about like crazy stuff around the world. They do that in Italy, like they cut themselves so that they can like bleed all over the streets, like representing Jesus or some shit like that. So, yeah, I guess they have like a different view on like uh, violence and blood and all that shit. I guess. Yeah, that's again like with Jalos is like looking at murder. I told Ben the other night is like looking at murder almost like an art form, which is why they yeah. did like you know they try to find the most beautiful women possible and all these weird things you probably wouldn't normally try to do when you're making like a graphic violent scene you wouldn't be like let's also throw a hot girl in here and try and make it look as cool as possible it's kind of a, a weird 
uh, sales pitch, but that's Italy. <laughs> Weirdos. And it worked out, and it's like stuff I love. It's just hard sell nowadays to be like, talk to some chick and be like, hey, you want to be basically like half naked or semi nude for the entirety of your scenes in this movie and then die a violent death? And, um, I mean, maybe if you hire them of uh, OnlyFans or something. Yeah, that's what everyone said. That's hilarious. Uh, we're just gonna do something different first until it's really easy to cast people. We'll either make something good on our own without uh, going full tilt like that, or we'll fail miserably. But we'll <laughs> find out sooner than later. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird that you say that because I feel that nowadays, like like you were saying, there's way less people that will be willing to do certain things. But at the same time, I feel that there's way more people out there that nowadays like they would do anything for money i don't know why i think that a lot of people now are kind of like that for some reason yeah i think it comes in waves we'll find out i'm just uh i think that's good on the jacket sorry i'm trying to make sense of this in my head I'm gonna need to find a blue. This is gonna be interesting. did this to myself. Sorry guys, I'm getting into the pain again like an asshole. Let me check chat. I've been making a werewolf story, but I'm trying to develop them in a way that furries wouldn't be able to fetishize. Yeah, good luck, man. I know that struggle. <laughs> as soon as it's cool, they'll make it sexy. <laughs> We're unsexy. Yeah, like, like I have a, a very yeah right, uh, a very near finished uh, werewolf screenplay that I wrote, and uh, don't know what the fuck is gonna come of that, and a giallo as well. Too much going on all the time.
doing this in reverse again because it was such a motherfucker to ink over the gouache the other night. I haven't been able to pick up new inking pens yet. You're using the uh, gouache? Oh yeah! It's pretty cool, man. I don't think I've ever used that. Uh, I've used like acrylics and watercolor, but uh, I don't think I've oh, ever used I am it. Falling in love with it fast. I always liked watercolor. Yeah, I'm like decent with it But uh, I like that. This is like watercolors with the properties of acrylics So it's kind of like a uh, thinner than acrylic. It's more like a uh, uh, It's it operates like a Fairly almost like a medium body acrylic but yeah. if you add water to it, it'll work like a watercolor more so. And the other thing too is it's reactivatable like watercolor. Oh, so, so like, like once it dries, like you can go over it again, like with water. Yeah, like I could this spare card that I've been using as a palette all week. I could yeah. add a little bit of water to that and use all of that paint again, and probably paint like ten more cards with it. Oh, that's like cool. this is kind of wasteful how I'm using it right now because <laughs> I'm using it like real opaque and painting it on thick like it's acrylic but that's yeah. why I like it you can paint it on thick like that or you can water it down and use it like watercolors like it's crazy versatile and it's uh, very forgiving like that op opaque over painting like you can paint something absolutely hate it and just paint over it with more gouache like Yeah, maybe I'll try it in the future. Like uh, right now, the thing that uh, the new technique, I guess, that um, I've never done before that I'm trying out is uh, ink wash and that kind of stuff. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, looking like, good, man. Yeah, like for example, on this, on the background, I tried to do like some of that. And uh, actually, for that, those stories that I'm doing for, for our scene, for the ways, I'm gonna use uh, ink wash to use. It's a lot of fun, actually, but uh, it's kind of scary sometimes. Oh yeah, that's big in, in tattooing, so I was like, I got to learn a lot about it working in a shop. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like, especially like mixing them yourself and stuff, are you doing that or do you like buy a gray wash? No, like I have like uh, this bottle of ink that uh, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like homemade ink, it's a bunch of, it's kind of like printer ink, uh, India ink, it's kind of like acrylic yeah. paint, mm. a bunch of shit because I couldn't find any ink uh, back in those days. So I use that you know, with some water and I can get some like really cool effects sometimes. But uh, oh, yeah. you, really, you really need to have an, an, an at least a basic understanding of like light, light and shadow on like different surfaces. Yeah. Because if you know like it's gonna look like shit. Oh yeah. Is there a certain artist you're looking at Juanito? Mm, no, not really. Uh, I think it it all started when uh, I tried to like take some uh, artistic drawing lessons or something like that, where they were trying to teach me uh, uh, doing portraits in pencils. Okay. I think that was like the first time that uh, they taught me like this technique to, to like kind of like, have a realistic type of shading. And uh, yeah, now value I'm shading. Like, yeah, like uh, you start with like some tones, and then you go darker, and then there's. You, it, it depends on everyone, you know, like, uh, some people, like, they like to leave the lights with, uh, or they paint, like, the lights with acrylic paint or something, you know, or, or like, they just leave those, those spaces. Oh, blank. yeah, painting over the highlights or not yeah. even filling them in. That's my problem, is I do so much extra work, because I'm like, oh, no, I could have just never colored in those highlights, but I do, and yeah. we'll see a lot of that. I kind of, like, use the same things that they told me in that uh, portrait, uh, those portrait lessons that I took, uh, kind of, like, use the same ideas, I guess, for ink wash. Yeah, techniques and things, just taking what works for you. Yeah. That's what it's all about, man. Do you guys want to control, like, uh, one panel from a... Uh, my little story that I'm gonna be doing for, for our scene. Yeah, man. Sure, yeah, I'm just... I will pull it up in a second here. I'm just stupidly doing all this fine detail work.
Oh, that's nice. You gonna put them on a solo layout? Yeah. Yeah, man, that's nice. Hell yeah, dude. That's looking great. Yeah. That's yeah, what the, the ink wash you were this, talking uh, about, too? Yeah, it's got like a... I do like the inking first, you know, with all the blacks and stuff. Like, kind of like a regular drawing. But then I go with... Yeah, uh, hauled lines and everything. Yeah, just for like some subtle uh, shading and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how I have to do stuff like like same thing with like the coloring I'm doing right now. I always need to do like some sort of structure lines so I have something to go off of. Yeah, yeah. it looks gnarly, man. <laughs> I like that. No, Hell you. yeah, dude. Such a friendly doge. I did this and I was like, oh shit, this isn't the part that's supposed to be yellow. <laughs> if you want, Fuck. you can make me small now. Nope, it's all you from it's, now on. It's the Juanito show now. Yeah. All Padrino all the time. That's why I wanted to get you on. <laughs> to exploit you <laughs> for <laughs> views. Damn. To sell you to some Midwestern white lady. <laughs> uh, as long as she's a milf, I'm done with her. She's gonna be your Bolivian. You're gonna be your Bolivian lover, and I'm gonna make good money. Trino's <laughs> 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 like, whatever. If she's hot, I'm game. <laughs> if she's older than forty, I'm done with her. Oh, Petrino likes them old. No shame in my game. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna clean up with that kid. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna find some 50 year old lady that's real down and out in her marriage. <laughs> I see. I think like card back in the day, there, there used to be a lot of uh, European uh, men and women that used to come to like the small villages and have like babies with the natives you know because that they used to think that they would be like stronger babies or whatever you know? it sounds like, so less bad when you say it for some reason <laughs> yeah because the thing is that like the white people used go... to come and bang the natives i'm like yeah <laughs> that'd be real bad if i said that <laughs> i just remember that uh when you go to like the villages you know like everybody is like uh it's like brown skin you know like they look like natives you know from from latino you know latino natives you know yeah. but, Every now and then you find like uh, that one child with like uh, blonde and green eyes and like yeah. you know like the whole story from like the old Europeans that you come there. Yeah, the one kid named Klaus in the village. Klaus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Skyler. Yeah. <laughs> Who's this fucking Adrian kid? <laughs> I thought we were in Peru. <laughs> What the fuck is going on? Yeah, do you guys have anything like that? Isn't it Peru that does that? Like they all get together and whoop each other's asses like once a year? Yeah, we, I think I think that started here actually in like uh, in a town called Macha. It's it's like a festivity, like the towns that they get together and they fight. If like yeah, they get together in like mountain elevation yeah. and beat the fuck out of each other. If they have like a problem with uh, some people have like, a problem with one of the other tribe or something like they fight and i think back in the day yeah they, they make death this solve it so you're not just like murdering each other you're like yeah but we're gonna like, kick uh, the shit out of each other in front of all the town elders and then it's gonna be like the beef is squashed but, like nowadays i don't know like how it is because like people go and like they actually like make videos like kind of, like like they make dvds of the fights and shit like that and the police yeah. is there and everybody's watching it's like if you watch like uh, some documentaries about it like nowadays you see that it's kind of like uh, an accepted thing, I guess. Like, no, it's not like illegal or something. It's like, they just do it. Yeah.
also there's even the even the women do that and i think there's also like even kids that they just fight you know yeah it's like uh like it seems i think in peru it's like a whole like weekend where like they literally like fucking entire like villages and stuff get together and like everybody's doing it yeah but it's, it's also like, like uh, classes it's just like you said it's like kids women you're not gonna see like a grown man beating up a child but like you'll see a grown man fight another grown man and a woman fight yeah. a woman kid with kid you know they all it's like yeah. a circle and they all fight in the circle and stuff but it's the like Turkish it's also got like a the really gay one where they like tie each other to get tie each other to each other and have to like <laughs> shove each other's hands down each other's pants what <laughs> yeah you've never seen that it's like Turkish oil wrestling no I think I've seen that yeah, the whole objective is to, like, I think, ram your hand down. It's either the crotch or the ass of your opponent's pants while you're both covered in, like, a metric shit ton of KY jelly. <laughs> you know, real manly stuff. Sounds manly. I mean, like, uh, was it, like, yeah, Greek wrestling or something like that? Oh, it's definitely Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Just they picked it up in Turkey, but it looks Greek from origin. Call me crazy, I know Greek wrestling when I see it. Doesn't matter if you put pants on. <laughs> I'm like, I know what this is. I read this in the history books. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, man. It's always great to have guests on that completely whoop my ass with time and everything. Oh, man, that kicks ass. Let me pull you up. Yeah. You got That's a full screen with Reno. That yeah, that is closer, yes, man. Charles Reeves says all of them are amazing. Thank you, Charles. Kick ass, Ben. Thanks. Do another Padrino. Yeah, that's awesome. Hell yeah. I didn't know we were doing a color, so I kept it I just keep... Oh no, it's all oh, good, you... man. He did the ink wash, man. Yeah. That looks good. Thank you, thank you, guys. It's a lot of fun. Thank you for coming on. Sorry you have to suffer through me. Hurry up, Spencer. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm just going to paint over these lines and redo those, because that's the least of my worries at this point. I think you really need to draw, like, a, a huge knife in the background or something so that doesn't look like a Disney car or something like that. I want to get sued. <laughs> I'm looking for the clout, Padrino. Should have a decapitated Minnie Mouse back there or Daisy Duck. Yeah. We're doing the New York Ripper reboot where he's just blatantly in a Donald Duck sailor suit. <laughs> no, you know what'd be creepy if it was like in a cartoon and all the characters are animals, but this guy's wearing like a like a person's face as a mask. I thought you were gonna say he's uh he's wearing the same outfit as Donald Duck, so his dick is just out the whole time. No, no. <laughs> You're like it's just like the cartoons they're all wearing the same outfits so this guy's just wearing a sailor's shirt <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah i think i think that's the killer over there with his exposed penis out <laughs> the guy dressed like donald duck over there on the street corner <laughs> it's probably him <laughs> like, oh where did i did i put that blue away like an idiot I think so, dude. I think it was cerulean blue. Oh, you know what? I'll work on that one I started the other day and didn't finish. Oh, snap. Yeah. So, looks like I'm cranking. I'm trying to finish this up. What are we on for time already? Oh, shit. We're at an hour and 20. I'm way behind. Time to crank. Sorry, boys. I said it was going to be a longer one tonight. It's all good. This will be fun, though, because at the end of it, I'll refresh the Alterna campaign. We'll see where we're at. We were $103 away from funded. Be real fucking cool if we hit that tonight. Just be able to guarantee Can't Kill K3 is on its way at that point. 
will be getting to all them sweet, sweet hands. And now I need. Yeah, I'm excited about this campaign. Yeah, I've been saying it a shitload, but it is really like a a gnarly lineup. And I'm selfishly stoked for uh, Horace H. Hoover to come out finally. Stoked Me for too. Fabrizio and stoked to read it. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't think there's going to be anything else like it in comic books. And that is the kind of stuff that piques my interest these days. I'm just lucky that it's an alterna book and I'll be able to get it on newsprint like I prefer. Yeah. Hey, how are things going with your new printer? Or can you not talk about that? Uh, real good, actually. Uh, we don't have a new newsprint printer still, but uh, the new guys that are doing the variants for us are going great, and actually the uh, all of the variants should be handed in tomorrow. I was having some hiccups with it just because their templates are different from anything I've used before. Really? Uh, but uh, should be all good to go tomorrow, proofs approved, and uh, get it done. Like, their colors should actually be, from what we've talked about and what I know of printing, their colors, because of the digital process they use and the, sh the small print runs we're doing, should end up being, excuse me, more accurate to the, uh, the actual colors than uh, even the newsprint ones at this point, so... Yeah, because yeah, be... the, news, the newsprint stuff is like CMYK, isn't it? Yep. Uh, you're going... I mean, it's real modern technology and everything, but it's still a pretty old school method of printing. It's just made to be cost effective and efficient over everything. Nice. Not so much accurate to the colors, so... That's why we always said these are like sort of like a boutique premium edition of the books and why it's kind of exciting, even though it was way ahead of when we planned on doing it, uh, to have like guys like you involved in it and get some of the, the, the friends on board on Death Curse stuff way sooner than we had originally intended to. Uh, so we kind of didn't want to bite off more than we could chew early on, and then we got screwed by our printer, and we were like... Well, we can offer this stuff we wanted to do down the road as, like, pre-orders, and it helps us get our shit back together. Which it has. We are well on our way. Nice. Hopefully, I really want to go up to Salem this month. We were originally going to try and do some events there, but both the shops are seemingly pulling away from comics as often. Uh, I don't really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a bummer. Kayla yeah. was just telling me how like the comics has scaled back big time at Harrison's, which is like our big go-to one every time we're out there. They're a great shop, but they're becoming a predominantly gaming and manga shop, it seems. Because that's what sells. What yeah. did you know? Crazy. Yeah, I like the idea of his mask being all vibrant and weird in the gouache. And the jacket not. I don't think we've ever streamed together before, have we? Oh, no, I don't think so. Well, it's, it's good to finally do it, man. Yeah, I'm insane. Making connections. Forcing you to sit in silence together. That's right, like, like artists do. Right. 
the real studio experience here, boys. That's right. Uh, you were always at the <laughs> Geronimo stream, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember, like, uh, always watching you there. Yeah, from outside your window. <laughs> 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 Yo, your bedroom looks great. <laughs> I'm gonna start popping into random YouTube streams like that. <laughs> Dude, living room looks awesome from the front yard. By the way, I'm your biggest fan. You gonna finish that sandwich in your fridge? <laughs> right. It's freaking out big CG dudes. Check it out, I'm on your Google Maps, or your Google Earth. <laughs> if you Google Earth through your house, you can see me in the bushes right now. Oh no, I made a little mistake. Good thing I can go over it with black ink. Everything's fixable when you're an idiot. There's no mistakes in art. It's yeah. just your style. I'm just gonna add a happy bush right on the middle of this guy's face. Just a happy little tree. It's a little happy accident. <laughs> this is all, all my violent drawings. Why is there a bush on that guy? It's an accident. <laughs> is that swamp thing? What is that? <laughs> Everything is swamp thing when you make accidents constantly. <laughs> it's not the New York Ripper, it's a bush. The Bushman. Oh, I just need the littlest bit more orange and some water. I forgot I can do that and I can kind of show Padrino what I was talking about before. Just give me a second here to lay this down real opaque like. Gotta go hooker paint mode first and then I can do what I was talking about. So that's the other thing with the gouache, at least this one, Padrino, is like you can almost get like 3D like texture and peaks to the paint. Yeah. If you lay enough of it down. Like it's got fairly good like hold and body to it for whatever reason. I don't know if that's like standard across the board with gouache. What's the brand you're using? This is just cheap Arteza shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, then I think I, I can get that one. Um, like this was just on like, this was like Amazon recommended a while back and it was super cheap, but see how like the like the bottoms of the lips right there where it's still white yeah. And you can see, like, my black line work there. So I could go over it with just solid gouache right now, but it's so opaque that that black line work would disappear. But I got yeah. a little bit of orange paint still on the end of my paintbrush, and there's orange gouache already on there right there. If I get literally the littlest bit of water, just dipping my, my brush into water, and then getting the excess off on the back of my hand... But then I go down to that. I can just pull up with a wet brush. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool. And even and if then, it's like a little wet, it's still kind of like a opaque. That, right? Well, then it operates more like watercolor now. So where if I had just painted over that with just the solid gouache and I didn't just use a wet brush, those black lines underneath the lip would have disappeared. Yeah. So like that, those little, there's little, it's hard to see in here, but there's little like hatch lines underneath that lip line. And uh, those would have just completely disappeared. But because I used the, the water technique, it literally just lays like a colored tint over it instead of fully painting over it. Whereas if you have a mistake or something, you want to cover up like that where you penciled it and everything. Like in the face, you saw the little like smudging from penciling and stuff, but I painted over that with the solid yellow and you can't see it anymore. Yeah. 
So it's cool because you get that that sort of versatility in the the opacity, where you can also just like like I said, water it down, and you can get those really soft, almost pastel hues that you would get from normal watercolor. Uh, so it's cool like that. But I think I'm gonna leave this one at this right now. Uh, I was going to add more red to it right now for the background, but I'm almost thinking I might do something new. I gotta add back in the lines for the hat, but I think I gotta let it dry more, and I don't want to punish you guys any more than I already have. Uh, so we'll leave this one where it is for now. We've been going an hour and a half. It's been a kick-ass time. I'm gonna show all the other ones again real quick with you guys. Uh, there's my New York Ripper for now. I'll uh, nice. finish him off stream. We'll check out Padrino's good boy again. Came out so kick-ass. I love it too. You pulled up the movie and went for the first <laughs> thing you saw, and I forgot it was, had a gnarly opening. And we got Ben's. Oh man, Ben's just doing them in a little sketchbook, banging them out. Kick ass, man. Thank you. Absolutely awesome. Thank you again, dudes, for coming on tonight. It was uh, yeah. a kick ass time. Would love yeah, to have you back on again. If, had a good time. Yeah, you want to come on? We're, we're going to have plenty more guests throughout the month, but I always got room. I think I can have like up to 10 people or something like that, but oh, wow. that might get a little chaotic. But uh, we got plenty of guests coming up, plenty more nights going. We're not even through the first week. Technically, tomorrow night will be the first week. We will refresh the Alterna page really quick. I haven't even seen what it's at yet, so it's refreshing. We'll see. Are we funded? No, we're not. We're still a hundred and three dollars away, but that is so damn close. It's gonna be a wacky night. I'm gonna sit with a gun in my mouth. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's dark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Please, God. <laughs> no, it's been awesome. Thank you to everyone who's already backed it. Thank you to everyone who's been coming on here and hanging out with us while we do these uh, draw streams. If you're drawing along, be sure to use the Halloween hashtag. And death curse hashtag on Twitter and post that shit. Tag me if you want to as well. Tag the death curse page. It makes it easier for me to see it. And if I don't see you drawing along, I can't give you away all sorts of cool free shit that we got. So uh, check it out. I think the first giveaway is probably going to be on the 14th because I got a couple of guests coming on for that. It's kind of going to be film discussion while I'm drawing. Maybe we'll have some other artists come on that night if you guys are around and you want to come on. But uh, we'll figure it out. It's gonna be it's gonna be a big one though, and I think that'll be the first giveaway night. Um, cool. And yeah, nice. we got cool stuff. We got we got Blu-rays. We got a vinyl soundtrack to give away. I think I just picked up another Blu-ray today, and uh, I'm gonna be giving away a bunch of these cards. I'm thinking like uh, if you win one of the movies, you'll get the card that corresponds with that movie. Uh, that's cool. And some people just win and be able to pick a card from the selection that's left over with that. Uh, but you'll be able to pick from all the cards that I've been doing. Um, you know, if you like something Ben or Padrino did here, reach out to them. Maybe they're willing to sell their stuff. Who knows? But Definitely. Uh, yeah, it's it's out there. If you guys dig it, hit them up. Thank you again for hanging out with us, Ben Padrino. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me tonight. Making yeah, it not thanks. just me talking okay. quietly by myself no problem and, uh, we're here to sit in silence just for you hell yeah happy Halloween, guys and uh i'll see you tomorrow night same time see you Take guys it easy see ya